In the vast realm of sporting moments, there stands but a few records that truly reach the title as unbreakable. In these rare flashes of brilliance, these performances are often so overwhelmingly dominant that it takes a few hours, if not a few days, to fully put into context at just how great these moments were. You probably have at least a few of these records in mind. There's LeBron James' new scoring record in basketball, now becoming the first and only athlete to ever break the 39,000 point barrier. There's of course the ever popular sprinting records from Usain Bolt from Jamaica, that have now stood strong for more than 14 years in both the 100 and the 200 meters. And then there's another record like Ricky Henderson's stolen base record, standing significantly above the rest of the world at over 1,400 stolen bases throughout his entire career. To fully reach the title as unbreakable, not only does a team or an athlete need to do something that nobody has ever done before, but they need to do something that stands for generations. This is where one athlete hailing from Cuba comes into the picture. From the late 80s to the late 1990s, there was one special athlete who was so dominant and so consistently brilliant that his athletic exploits have since gone down as some of the most notable in the sport of track and field. In the men's high jump, Javier Sotomayor was simply the greatest to ever do it. Case closed. His vertical jump was above anyone else's, his athletic timing was simply superior, and of course, his clutch jumping during the biggest moments were also unmatched. From 1984 all the way to the year 2000, Sotomayor became a force to be reckoned with at every single competition. From the junior ranks all the way up to the Olympic Games, he was just unstoppable, and despite missing out on two separate Olympics because of boycotts, he still won medals in two separate Olympics, he won two individual world championships, and he also broke the world record on four separate occasions. In 1988, he broke his very first world record with a jump of 2.43 meters, and as you can see, his height was insane, and his ability to bend his body over the bar was unmatched here. Moving forward to 1989, he then broke two more world records, first with an indoor jump of 2.43 meters in the World Championships, and then an outdoor jump of 2.44. And this high jump world record, the first to ever exceed the eight-foot barrier, was an absolute spectacle. They cleared the bar at 2 meters 44, eight feet. Pandemonium ensued, and it was partly by luck and partly due to the effort of the officials that the crowd did not dislodge the bar and invalidate one of the great performances in track and field annals. Following these three world records, he then set another world record in 1993, where he struck again, this time achieving the all-time greatest jump in track history. On a warm summer day in Salamanca, Spain, Sotomayor found himself at the absolute zenith of jumping history. With the bar now positioned at 2.45 meters, or eight feet and one half inches, he stood before a height that had never been achieved by any athlete in history. And with a nearly perfect jump, Sotomayor did this. This jump has since stood the test of time, and it's officially passed the 30-year mark as the greatest jump in the history of track and field. And in the minds of many track fans around the world, this record has officially achieved the label as unbreakable. To this day, he still remains as the only athlete to ever exceed the 8-foot barrier, a height that is so daunting to look at in real time that it really does seem almost impossible that anyone was ever able to achieve this. Now, to truly understand how crazy this height actually is, try touching the ceiling of your room right now, because it's probably somewhere around eight feet. Now imagine jumping your entire body over this height. Since the late 1980s, Sotomayor's name has been synonymous with the world record, and to this day, the number one, number two, and number three positions are filled by this one powerful Cuban's name. However, if we take a look at the man who is now tied at number three all time with a jump of 2.43 meters, we see one of the more interesting moments in jumping history. And to this day, many actually claim that this jump is actually the single greatest jump of all time. To be competitive in the men's high jump, you'll need a few key characteristics to find international success. 
Of course, you'll need flexibility to get over the bar at the right time, as this ability to bend may also buy you a few extra centimeters at the highest point of your jump. You'll need great spatial awareness, as oftentimes an athlete can get lost in space during these extreme jumps. And perhaps the most obvious and the most important feature to great jumping, you'll need a very high vertical leap. Now, to this day, the vertical leap is one of the most misreported and misunderstood aspects of athletic accomplishments across the entire internet. Some reports have people jumping in excess of 55 or even 60 inches at times, which, by most accounts, is completely impossible. To this day, the most agreed upon jumping standard is right around 50 to 51 inches. This includes the standard vertical test of no movement followed by a still standing jumping test. This is truly some incredible jumping abilities, and it's only achieved by the greatest jumpers of our time. The vertical leap does play an important role, but factoring in timing and positioning equals a far more important jumping standard. Compared to the best vertical jumpers in the world, some of the best high jumpers do get fairly close to these numbers. However, it's the overall dynamics in the air that separate them from everyone else. This is where Sotomayor gains such a crazy advantage. With extraordinary jumping and amazing bending over the bar, he took the history books by the horns for close to a decade. And after more than 20 years of standing atop of the record books, something very interesting finally happened during the 2014 season, where one athlete hailing from Qatar would do something that shook the very foundation of the high jump. In the Diamond League meeting in Brussels, Belgium, Mutaz Barshim was up against the defending world champion, Bodan Bondarenko. At the time, these two were easily two of the best jumpers on the planet. And on this particular day, the competition quickly went from fierce to unforgettable. For the first few clearances, Bondarenko was flawless, clearing heights of 2.28 meters, 2.34, and 2.37 meters. And even though Barshim knocked the bar off his jump at 2.37 meters, both men cleared a height of 2.40 meters in the next round on their very first attempt. Now, to put into context at just how crazy this competition was getting, only 11 athletes to this day have ever achieved a height of 2.4 meters or higher. And even though this was an amazing accomplishment, what happened during the very next round changed absolutely everything. Now, what can Bashim do now? Two centimeters off the world record, what a jump! With a clearance of 2.43 meters, Barshim had cleared a height that hadn't been touched since 1993, meaning that at this exact moment, Barshim had become the second highest jumper in history. With such a crazy height achieved in a fairly dominant way, Bondarenko certainly had his work cut out for him, and unfortunately, he couldn't quite make another height for the remainder of this competition. After this 2.43 clearance, Barshim had the bar raised to a height of 2.46, which of course would be a new world record over Sotomayor. And on his very last attempt, he approached the bar, jumping with amazing speed. However, he fell just short of this world record. And at some points, you could argue that he had the overall height, but his overall positioning and his leg movement at the end made this attempt fall just a little bit short. Now, looking back at this one particular 2.43 meter clearance, many find this jump to be of extreme importance. At the peak of this jump, Barshim's height achieved was just amazing, and at the very peak, officials estimated that he was somewhere between 2.46 and 2.50 meters, which is truly amazing, but it is also very important to reiterate, he was not able to fulfill the world record standard, meaning that Javier Sotomayor still stands as the world record holder to this day. This jump still makes Barshim the second greatest jumper of all time, and for the remainder of his career, Barshim would find tremendous success, winning a total of 10 global medals, and he also had a pretty iconic gold medal in the Tokyo Olympics, where famously, Barshim and Yanmarko Temberi shared the gold medal with an equal high jump of 2.37. To this day, the world record still stands at 2.45 meters, and also to this day, Sotomayor still stands the all-time record for most outdoor jumps at 2.40 meters or better, with a total of 17 of these jumps to his name. However, not far behind in second place is none other than Mutaz Barshim with 11 jumps at 2.4 meters or greater. Thanks for watching, everyone. And as always, until next time.